we are going to take a look at the Red Planet and review opinions, theories and exploration in this documentary. We are also going to review plans mankind has, to colonize Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and the second smallest planet in the solar system, being larger than only Mercury. In English, Mars carries the name of the Roman god of war. Mars is a terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere, and has a crust primarily composed of elements similar to Earth's crust, as well as a core made of iron and nickel. Mars has surface features such as impact craters, valleys, dunes, and polar ice caps. It also has two small and irregularly shaped moons. The two moons of Mars are named Phobos and Deimos. Mankind has sent six rovers to Mars, five operated by the United States and one operated by China. The names of the five rovers of the United States are Sojourner, Spirit, and Opportunity, Curiosity, Perseverance. The Chinese rover Zhurong, landed on 15th of May 2021. A Mars rover is a motor vehicle designed to travel on the surface of Mars. Rovers have several advantages over stationary landers, they examine more territory, they can be directed to interesting features, they can place themselves in sunny positions to weather winter months, and they can advance the knowledge of how to perform very remote robotic vehicle control. Many believe, there have been alien civilizations on Mars, and some, are trying to prove that theory. Founder, the Sidonia Institute. George Haas. The whole idea for the Sidonia Institute started when NASA announced in 1991 that they were going to return to Mars with the Mars Observer. And over the last 30 some years of our group studying NASA photographs, we have found an enormous amount of evidence that led us to believe there are artificial structures on Mars. Many are working on gathering information to prove some sort of life existed on Mars. The Sidonia Institute. James Miller. What we're trying to do is get a preponderance of evidence together so that we can prove the point that there's ruins all over the planet. And just as you would here on Earth, you're going to look for straight lines, parallel lines, circles, squares, rectangles, things of this nature. And when you find them, then you can start to zoom in on areas and look for even uh, stronger details. When the Perseverance landed, one of the first things that I noticed was a conical pyramid in the distance. The camera there took a beautiful couple pictures of it. Is it possible that we are looking at an ancient pyramid made by an alien race on Mars? Or could it have formed naturally over the years? It doesn't make any sense to me geologically how that could happen. That was one of the biggest anomalies that was. We are going to take a look at some, what many believe, to be structures on Mars. Former UK Minister of Defense, Nick Pope, you look at images of this and people are spotting all sorts of strange shapes and pyramids, structures of some kind on the Martian surface. Is it something left by a lost civilization as maybe a, a monument to themselves and their achievement? Some of this may just be a trick of the light, funny shaped rocks that sort of thing. But one of these things has got to be the real deal. And we're in game-changing territory. The following image appears to be of an ancient pyramid similar to the ones present on Earth. Could we be looking at a structure built by an alien civilization in the past? It is possible, but not convincing that this pyramid could have formed naturally over thousands of years. This is one of many images of unexplained structures found on the planet Mars. The next image we are going to take a look at, is what seems to be a helmet of some sort. The color of it appears to be different from the surrounding rocks. Could we be looking at an alien item from the past? Or, could it be just a rock formation that looks similar to what we would refer to, as what our military members, would wear for armor protection for the head? In the next image, it would appear, that it's possible we are looking at ancient buildings from the past. The rectangle shapes of the two structures must have been made by something or someone, other than occurring naturally. The color does match the surrounding landscape but the straight lines are hard to overlook. As with the last image, this one, appears to be another structure of an ancient building. It would seem you can make out a doorway or hangar door of some sort positioned in the front of the building. It could be possible it formed naturally. But, 
these images seem very similar to the ancient ruins discovered here on Earth. The following image appears to be of a giant land carving of what would seem to be a woman or what we would refer to as a woman figure. It is possible that it's just shadows playing tricks. But there is a similarity to land carvings discovered here on Earth. Could it be a carving of a woman? Or did it form naturally over the years? Both sides could present good arguments. The next image could be right out of a sci-fi movie. Some believe this is an image of a crashed alien spacecraft on Mars surface. The color difference in the background compared to the object is quite different. The protruding shape breaking the landscape. The straight lines it seems to have. Is it possible we are looking at an ancient alien spacecraft that either crashed landed or was abandoned many years in the past? The next image is what many referred to as the face of Mars. PhD geologist Robert Schock. It was discovered that there was this weird looking structure that looks for all the world in the Viking photos like a face. Everything is proportional. If the face is a mile and a half, two miles long, the eyes are a quarter mile, the nose about a half a mile. So it's not small structure, it's very large structure. I believe that the face on Mars was created from uh, possibly an existing mesa. It's not just a face. But on top of that, people saw what they called the DNM pyramid, which is this weird five-sided structure that looks like a five-sided pyramid. People were claiming this had to be artificial structure. The so-called face of Mars has been up for debate for many years. As more evidence comes forth, it makes you wonder, was there an ancient civilization in the past habiting the planet Mars? If so, what happened to them? Where did they go? The next image we are going to look at is another view of what many believe is a side profile of a face wearing a headdress. Again, here on Earth, we have similarities of the image. Area called Utopia in a huge impact crater is the profiled face that has a beard, a mustache, and he's wearing a helmet that has an avian headdress. When the bearded profile on Mars is compared to the Badlands Guardian, we see the same type of profile. Both incorporate avian iconography. One has a headdress of feathers. The other one is wearing a headdress that incorporates an entire bird. As more evidence gets uncovered, the theory of mankind coming from Mars is growing in popularity among many in the scientific world. If we did come from Mars, will our destiny be any different here on planet Earth? Many believe on the surface of Mars are signs of a major war that has scarred the surface. Results from tests run with the rover on planet Mars. It seems there was a large nuclear explosion on the planet. Possible two large nuclear explosions. Dr. John Brandenburg, Lecture. Anomalous Nuclear Events on Mars. Anomalous nuclear explosions in Mars past. An interesting title. I hope you find the talk interesting. So it's as if there is a radioactive layer on the top surface of Mars. So these isotopic data is consistent with a large fission event, a large explosion in air acid alien, maybe a smaller one in the Tokyo planum. How could this occur on Mars? Well, um, the first thing we looked at was a natural nuclear reactor. The truth is stranger than fiction, far more interesting. In summary, the xenon, krypton, uranium thorium anomalies are consistent with a large thermonuclear weapon, mid air explosion in the past, and little else. There is no known natural process. Many believe there was a nuclear reaction happened on Mars in the past. Is it possible ancient civilizations had a war on Mars with nuclear weapons? The evidence seems to say so. We are now going to take a look at mankind's journey to colonize planet Mars. NASA and SpaceX are leading the way, working on bringing mankind to Mars and setting up a colony. Let's listen to Elon Musk's vision for the future of mankind and Mars. And sometimes people wonder, well, what about 
other places in the solar system, why, why Mars? Well, um, just to sort of put things into perspective, this is, this, is what, this is an actual scale of what the solar system looks like. So we're, we're currently in the, the third little rock from the left, uh, that's Earth. And, and our goal is to go to the fourth rock on the left, uh, that's Mars. One option if we want to become a multi-planet civilization, and that's, that's Mars. Um, we could conceivably go to our moon, um, and I certainly have nothing against going to the moon, but I think it's, it's challenging to create a, uh, become multi-planetary on the moon because it's, it's much smaller than, than, than a planet. Uh, it doesn't have any atmosphere. It, it's not as resource rich as Mars. Um, it's got a 28 day day, whereas the Mars day is 24 and a half hours. Um, and it, in general, Mars is, is far better suited to ultimately scale up to be a self-sustaining civilization. We, we, don't, we don't just want to have, you know, with Mars, flags and footprints and then not come back for a half century like we did with the moon. Uh, in, in order to pass a very important great filter, I think we, we need to be a multi-planet species. The self-sustaining part is important. Like it's just the, the key threshold, um, the, the great filter will, will have been passed when the city on Mars it can survive even if the spaceships from Earth stop coming for any reason. The first step to colonizing Mars will be to ship supplies to the red planet before any humans take the journey to Mars. SpaceX has designed such a rocket. Starship is a fully reusable, super heavy lift launch vehicle that is currently being developed and manufactured by American aerospace manufacturer SpaceX. It is the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built. The rocket consists of the super heavy booster stage and the Starship spacecraft on top, and is mainly constructed out of stainless steel. Both Starship stages are fueled with liquid oxygen and methane, and are propelled by variants of Raptor engines. Both stages are designed for rapid reuse after a vertical landing. With a single launch, the expected payload to low Earth orbit is at least 100 tons, 220,000 pounds. The planned Starship tanker variant can be used to refuel the main spacecraft in orbit, leading to the same payload for flights to the Moon and Mars. Using resources on Mars, Starship can refuel and return back to Earth. The next step to colonizing Mars, is to send supplies ahead of any manned flight. The craft will not only deliver supplies for the colony. NASA and SpaceX have the craft set for multi-use. Some will be for habitat. Others for labs, greenhouses and more. A colony will only survive in the beginning by the support from Earth. It will be vital that Earth continuously send supplies. The goal will be that the colony over time will be self-sufficient. After the supplies have arrived, it's now time to send the first of many to colonize Mars. The trip will be long and dangerous. Yeah, going to Mars reads like that ad for, for, for Shackleton going to the Antarctic. You know, it's, it's dangerous, uh, it's uncomfortable, um, it's a long journey. You might not, you know, come back alive, um, but it's a glorious adventure, and uh, it'll be amazing, an, an amazing experience. With the first of mankind making the trip to Mars for colonization, the priorities would be to set up the colony, assemble all the stations needed for survival on the red planet. Stations would include living and sleeping quarters, labs for research, engineering shops for fabrication greenhouses for food production. Many other stations will be needed to sustain life in the colony. One of the colony's priorities will be to set up greenhouses to provide food. With Mars atmosphere not suitable for plant life, everything will have to be self-sustained and maintained. It will be a necessity to provide ample amounts of food to meet the requirements for the colony and to not have to rely on Earth for food supplies. Another priority will be processing fuel and building fuel storage facilities. Creating energy will be of most importance for the colony's survival. So we, um, it, it would require maybe anywhere from you know, 50 to 60% of the energy on Mars to, re, to uh, refill propellant uh, using the, the propellant depot. And, and just the, the technical challenges are a lot easier. So, so we, think, we think methane's actually better on uh, you know, just really almost across the board. Um, and, and we started off initially thinking that hydrogen would make sense, but ultimately came to the conclusion that the, the best way to optimize the cost per unit mass to Mars and back um, is, is to use an all methane system, or, or technically deep cryo methylogs. 
with the completion of living facilities, food production and fuel refineries and storage. The Mars colony is a few steps closer to being self-sufficient. As time progresses, the colony should almost be to the point of no longer needing support from Earth. One of the final steps the colony will face is the long and daunting task of terraforming the planet to better accommodate human life. Physics. Michio Kaku. But we need a settlement. A settlement on Mars in case something bad happens to the planet Earth. And that means we have to terraform Mars. Now, to terraform Mars, if we could raise the temperature of Mars by six degrees, six degrees, then the polar ice caps begin to melt, releasing water vapor. Water vapor is the greenhouse gas. It causes even more melting of the ice caps. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It feeds on itself. It uh, becomes autocatalytic. And so once you hit six degrees, rising of the temperature on Mars by six degrees, it takes off. And we melt the polar ice caps and liquid water once again flows in the rivers, the canals, the channels, and the oceans of Mars. Mars once had an ocean, we think, about the size of the United States. And so that is a possibility. Now, how do we get there? How do we raise the temperature of Mars by six degrees? Elon Musk would like to detonate hydrogen warheads on the polar ice caps. Yes. Well, I'm not sure about that uh, because we don't know that much about the effects of detonating hydrogen warheads to melt the polar ice caps. And who wants to glow in the dark at night reading the newspaper? <laughs> so I think there are other ways to do it with solar satellites. You can have satellites orbiting Mars that beam sunlight onto the polar ice caps, melting the polar ice caps. Mars has plenty of water. It's just frozen. One thing is for sure. Mankind needs to be a multi-planet species to ensure the survival of the human race. Elon Musk. Yeah, eventually, given enough time, that's something the Earth is likely to experience some calamity. Um, that could be something that humans do to themselves or an external event like happened to the dinosaurs. And, and, and if, 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 none, none, if, if none of that happens and somehow magically we, we keep going, uh, then the, the sun will ex the sun is gradually expanding um, and will en engulf the earth um, and probably earth gets too hot for uh, life in about 500 million years it's a long time but that's only 10 percent longer than earth has been around mankind's quest to be a multi-planet species is within its grasp with nasa and spacex making the vision of putting a colony on mars possible in the future the human race takes another step forward in preservation. The destiny of mankind seems to be planet Mars. Will it be possible to colonize and terraform the planet for the human race in the future? It would seem so. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and hit the bell for notifications.